right off the bang, you know, Lynn had such a great, she's so well respected in the food community, we had, no one said no to us. And in fact, um, we're gonna play you a clip that some of you I'm sure have heard before, but it is a beauty. Um, Julia Child was, I called, I'll never forget, I called, I said, Julia, it's Sally Swift, and she goes, hello! I was like, <laughs> it really is. I said, of course I'll do this, you know, so got her into the studio, and um, we're live at this point, and you, you have to, you'll list the, we're going to play this clip for you. I think it was, I think it was our first month. Um, she is so sure of herself and has done so much media. You need to listen. Oh, don't tell them. What? Don't, just, just play it. You know, I have to tell you what, she, you have to listen, because what <laughs> she's doing while she's being interviewed, reading the paper. <laughs> Can we roll it? Julia, welcome to the Splendid Table. Well, lovely to be with you, Lynn. It's good to have you here. And the first thing that I want to know <laughs> is, how did you begin? Because uh, from what I understand, you didn't grow up saying, I think I want to become uh, no, a food professional. No, I didn't professional. at all. I was always very hungry. And my mother didn't cook at all because I grew up in the teens and 20s when... Everybody just about had had a had a maid because they were, were it wasn't expensive. We had all the people, the immigration, and oh. so almost everyone had a maid. So oh, mother yeah. never cooked at all. She could make some funny kind of in English cheese dish. That was about it. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'm interested in really kind of hobby cooking, where it's very where it's interesting to do. I don't understand. I don't want to just throw something on the table. I don't know, there's some people who say you sh should use no more than five ingredients. Well, what kind of... That's not interesting, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's housewife's cooking, the menagere, and the French consider her about the dumbest person who ever walked down the pipe. When was the first time that it dawned on you that food was really important to you? Well, it did. It did particularly during World War II because we were over in China and India and we had, I don't know who cooked the food. It was just dreadful. They had, you know, dried water buffalo and that. it was t just terrible food. But we were in China, we were able to go out and eat in the restaurants because we had some people who knew China. And that food was delicious and I think that's when it really dawned upon me what what wonders could come out of the kitchen. Then you went to then, France. Yeah, and then we got married, and I didn't really know how to cook a all. We would eat till about 10 at night. It just took me so long. I was using the joy of cooking in Gourmet Magazine, because I had to learn to cook. Then when I got over to France, this wonder of that food was so delicious. And so I immediately, as soon as we got settled in, I went to the Cordon Bleu. And the more I got into it, the more I loved it, and the more I appreciated it as a true art form that you could spend your life over. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> like, I want to know what page she was reading. <laughs> she was like, reading, like, was it like, like the sports page? I would bet page? it was the like... Boston Globe, and it was probably the political page. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I can remember, well, I ended up staying with Julia when I was on tour with The Splendid Table, the book, and um, uh, I had sent her some lovely smoked fish as a thank you, and she wrote back and said, we're going to eat this the night of the election. If that awful, I don't remember, I'm trying to remember who it would have been. Anyway, she said, and we're hoping that person does not get in. <laughs> she was, I, I think she was probably talking about someone who was on the liberal side, but uh, she was an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. An amazing woman, and I think I said this before, she could have chosen anything and she would have been extraordinary at it. And her feeling for people, just amazing, but funny, really. And she loved to gossip. <laughs> God, she loved to gossip. When I stayed with her, she had her nephew staying and she had this great system, very pragmatic. It was a big old house in Cambridge. And um, she, we each had a key, came in the side door and there was a stool and there were flashlights because the house was dark and you, your name was on a pad, and when you came in, you crossed out your name, and you took a flashlight. <laughs> and Julia probably would come down in her bathrobe, you know, at one point, and say, okay, everybody's here, and I can lock the door and set the alarm. Very practical. There's something else, and 
I, this is kind of ego egoistical to say, but um, it takes a long time to make friends with your book. I think a lot of people go through this. I don't know if you see it with your authors as, your, as being an editor, but when Splendid Table was done, I really, I was looking at it as though I had had nothing to do with it. I, I, I was sort of overwhelmed. And, um, and also, I, you know, it, it had gotten a lot of attention. So at any rate, I, here was Julia, the great compliment of staying in her home, which was wonderful. Um, and she picked, she was much busier than I was, much busier. And um, there was a reception one night for the press and food people. And that's, she came to it. That was like this incredible endorsement. It was so generous of her. And afterward, we had dinner together, and we were talking, because we would meet every night in the kitchen for what she called a small libation. <laughs> and we would have a little bit of gin on ice, and we'd have a little nibble of something, and we'd talk and tell goth stories, and it was lovely. But here I was, sitting at the table with Julia Child, holy cow. I'd worked with her in the past, but I never got over this awe. And, and um, she said to me, she was asking me about how I did the book, why I did the book. And, and she said, you know, Lynn, it's a seminal work. Hmm. And I, I literally sat there, my eyes wide. I couldn't articulate. I just was dumb. And she looked at me and she said, do you know what the word seminal means? <laughs> And again, it was this, this, this funny sense you have of you've worked and worked and worked over this thing for God knows how long and, you know, prayed over it and rewritten it and all this. And, and you don't know it right now. She's, you're going to get to know her. She's a baby. But you're not going to. But right. It's so in the work. Oh, my God. She was amazing. I loved her dearly. She was great. Mm -hmm.